Hi, this is Dr. Eiko Holman, and I'm continuing in the area of quantum field miracles number two. There are many, many uh, examples I can tell you, and as I said, Phil Mason's book is fantastic, really uh, excellent. So I highly recommend that you read that book, and uh, uh, I, I want to share some areas of different features of subatomic level of quantum physics. Okay, so one part is by location. The particles in the quantum field can be two places at the same time. And there are a lot of uh, 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 examples of experiments, phys physical experiment of uh, one electron or photon going through two slits experiment and then go simultaneously one particle going to two slits and then go into the wave particles, uh, I mean from particles to wave and then interference patterns will be shown on the next level in the, the field. Well, that's is called bilocation and uh, Jesus represented or demonstrated his bilocation because he was constantly in the spirit realm with the Father and but uh, physically he was on this earth that's obvious and but uh, he was constantly in two places at the same time simultaneously so he could understand or know what the Father is doing and what the Father is instructing him to do and at the same time what's going on on this physical realm, people suffering, it is coming to him with the, you know, uh, lepers conditions, blindness and uh, deafness and withered hand and all these conditions. Uh, he was aware of all this, including raising the dead. And so, or uh, turning water into wine, okay? So all these things, he was dealing with the quantum level, which in turn had the access or uh, power to restructure into the physical realm. And so what we need to understand is you and I, as children of God, once we receive the, the Holy Spirit who is residing within us, we are also bilocated. Our real person is a spirit, and we are already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's uh, Hebrews, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Okay, so our real person, the spirit being, is in the throne room now. Okay, but obviously, physically, we are on this earth. And so we deal with the physical conditions and so on, but uh, by location is real. And so then uh, quantum entanglement shows that when two particles are together once, and then when the two par particles are millions of miles apart, they are still in communication and they never lose touch, you know, connection between the two. Now, in the same way, you and I, once we uh, entanglement in the spirit realm, remember, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And so, when we are connected, entangled, then we can be any place, any place on this earth or different countries, we are still connected. And if one person in the body of Christ suffers, we all suffer when one person in the body of Christ is glorified and, you know, encouraged, and then the rest of us will glorify, okay? So in the same way, we are connected. We are not separate in the spirit, amen? And also, uh, quantum tunneling is a very interesting experiment because they had the experiment with the one particle going through a slit, and then it will go directly unhindered to the 
uh, destination and the, the recording is done. But then another one uh, will go through the barriers, uh, let's say concrete wall or metal uh, brick wall, a metal wall, you know, any kind of barrier. It will go through that barrier and then arrive at the same destination. So w we will think that the particle that go through the barrier will arrive later than the, the other one without going through the barrier. But it's exact opposite. They decided to go through different thickness of the barrier, you know, like a, a few inches thick and few yards thick or long, long, you know, thick, thick uh, barrier walls. And as it turned out, the thicker the barrier, the faster it arrived at the destination. Earlier than the particle that without any barrier going to the same destination. And so this is very counterintuitive. And what the scientists discovered is this. The particle actually did not go through the barrier because with our concept of barrier, it would take longer. And the thicker the barrier, the longer it will take. That's our, you know, classic physics understanding. But what they surmised is this. The particle dematerialized right before the barrier and then rematerialized after the, at the end of the barrier. And therefore, it arrived much faster earlier than the particle that without the barrier. Isn't that interesting? And uh, so, uh, coming back to the New Testament example, remember Jesus appeared suddenly inside the room when the, all the doors and windows are closed. <coughs> this was after Jesus' resurrection, right? And uh, uh, he appeared to his disciples when they were, you know, fearful of all the persecution and the Jewish and so on. And so they were. Uh, huddling over in uh, just this uh, one room, uh, Jesus suddenly appeared uh, and said, Peace be unto you. How did he get in? Did he walk through the wall? No, he didn't have to. Because according to this quantum tunneling understanding, he dematerialized before the wall or the door and then rematerialized inside the room. And so, regardless of the understanding or the interpretation of what happened, Jesus was able to do dematerialize, rematerialize, and of course, restructure the chemistry of the water into wine, for example, okay? And then multiplying bread and fishes, okay? And uh, many people think that Jesus you know, multiplied fish and loaves, you know, multiplied the, the, the tremendous amount of, you know, food already available. And then 5,000 people, in, not including women and children, so that means, uh, you know, more than 5,000. They were all fed to four. But interesting part is what the, the scripture tells us is that Jesus gave to his disciples just the, you know, the, the little piece of bread, a little piece of fish. And then each disciple started to go around different uh, groups of people. And, you know, as they divided, and as they give out and dividing the bread and fish, as they did, they multiplied. So instead of multiplying the food all at once, and uh, you know, pile of food and so on, and then they distribute it. No, as they divided, as they distribute, those things started to multiply. And another miracle Jesus performed was Jesus actually created grass field where people, 5,000 people, was able to sit down on the grass. It tells that, in, you know, the scripture tells us they were in the desert. They walked long way following Jesus. And Jesus had compassion and that they had no 
you, you know, food and for long, maybe several hours walking. And uh, before Jesus fed them, I'm sure Jesus had to create a grass field. Remember, it was a desert, no grass, but the grass field on which to sit down, the, you know, group, groups of people, before they were well, distributed the, this food and they were fed to four and they even had leftovers. Isn't that wonderful? And so this is definitely uh, the miracles of God. Jesus knew from the throne room and entering into the quantum field, which is the bridge between the spirit and the material realm. And you and I can do the same. This is the most exciting part because the Lord gave us the way to enter into the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus according to Hebrews 10.19. Please remember this. We cannot enter into the Holy of Holies without the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10.19. We enter into that from, from there, from the throne room. We can look down into the quantum field and we have access to it. We speak what God wants us to speak and according to his will. And uh, I will talk about keys of the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 16, 19. And we can speak God's will to be manifested on this earth. Okay. And so the next one, I will get into that. Okay. This is an exciting field of co-laboring with God. Amen.